plan is terrifying in its simplicity. It is to blow up the king, the king's nearest relations, the entire nobility, the political nation, gathered together at the state opening of Parliament. In May 1604, they actually come up with the, the means to put this plan into effect. A house adjacent to the old House of Lords has fallen vacant, the lease has fallen vacant. It was Thomas Percy, newly appointed to the King's bodyguards, who secured the lease on the apartment. To avoid arousing suspicion, Guy Fawkes now took up residency under the alias of John Johnson, passing himself off as Percy's servant. Because he had been out of the country for ten years, he was unknown in the small world that was Jacobean London. And that's always important. If you're um, planning treason, you need someone who can walk about the streets without arousing attention or suspicion. The idea of Guy Fawkes, alias John Johnson, unknown, coming into the extremely busy Palace of Westminster. I mean, we're so used to the Palace of Westminster having security and needing security. Uh, we have no idea. It was like a sort of commercial rabbit warren, uh, merchants and wine cellars and all the rest of it. Early Jacobean England was crawling with spies on the lookout for any Catholic who might be a threat to the king. The spymaster in charge of the operation was Sir Robert Cecil, Secretary of State and King James's Chief Minister. He's a workaholic. He has virtually no life except for his professional life and he'd already had long service under Elizabeth, so here's a very experienced senior bureaucrat. And across Cecil's desk comes a tremendous miscellaneous range of information. You get what the modern mind recognizes immediately as the nutter letter, and he gets a lot of those. But he also gets anything that might be regarded as unnerving or unsettling. And there's all sorts of bits and pieces that he's getting about increasing Catholic disaffection. Much of it wrong in detail, but adding up to a feeling that something is moving somewhere. The plotters were working towards a deadline of February 1605, the date set for the state opening of Parliament. But then, circumstances changed when Parliament was prorogued, postponed, for eight months. There was always plague in London, and when the plague was virulent, it wasn't thought a good plan to have a meeting of Parliament. So Parliament, who should have met earlier in the year, was prorogued till October. We should be chanting, remember, remember, the 3rd of October. Now, on the one hand, this gave the plotters much more time to organize things. On the other hand, of course, as with all conspiracies, the longer lead time there is, the more the danger of people finding out 